my name is Jesse McIntosh, and um, I'm actually not from Indianapolis. I'm from, um, still from Indiana, but I'm uh, from southern Indiana, uh, from a little small town. Um, actually, it's it's not big now, but everybody knows about it now because, of, unfortunately, because of the HIV epidemic and outbreak. Um, um, so, I was born in Seymour, Indiana, but about 20 miles south of there is Scottsburg in Austin, which is all Scott County. Um, and that's where I'm from, and as everybody probably has heard that there is uh, an epidemic of, of uh, HIV, but uh, that all stems from addiction and, uh, you know, uh, needle um, usage and uh, drug abuse. Um, so basically, um, I started using <coughs> um, alcohol and drugs um, at the age of 13, and um, because it just came so normal to me from my family, you know, um, uh, everyone in my family uh, used drugs, uh, you know, growing up. Except for when I went to my grandma and grandpa's house. It was about the only time I got a break from it. So, um, but, um, so I had, you know, that influenced me a lot to where when I came at the age where it was kind of around, then, you know, it was just normal to go ahead and try it or um, drink it or whatever, you know. Um, so at 13, I started drinking and smoking marijuana, you know, just about how a lot of people started. Um, and uh, from there, uh, it started off slow. Um, going to school, of course, still at that age. Um, and then as it went um, pro progressively, you know, got a little worse, a little worse, um, actually started um, selling it, which was, um, not a help to, to my addiction because, you know, somebody would come up and, you know, or try to trade me something for, you know, weed or whatever. And I feel comfortable about talking about it today. I don't care, you know, because I'm different now. But um, so once you've got other stuff, of course, you know, once you've been doing weed for so long or, you know, whatever, you can get curious on other things. So, um, you know, we can fast forward to say that. Obviously, I started using um, prescription medication, cocaine, um, methamphetamine, different stuff. Um, so uh, there came a, a time, probably when I was about 18 or 19. At that point, I dropped out of school. Not because I wanted to purposely drop out, but I just missed so much school from being hungover so many times that I got kicked out. So. Um, but uh, in middle school, they did offer me a scholarship for 21st century because I was actually making the honor roll and still, um, you know, smoking weed and all that stuff. So, um, yeah, I, I look back on that and I'm really uh, disappointed that things went the way they did. But at the same time, I wouldn't be who I am now if it wasn't for that. So I'm grateful for that. Uh, so 18, 19. I started using drugs uh, through a needle, which at that point my addiction um, went to a whole, uh, another level. You know, I think by the time you're doing that, um, something else changes inside of you to where you're just basically all the way gone instead of just kind of like hanging on. So, um, uh, my whole family in this little town has been through the court system multiple times. And I think I can agree with Kevin a lot when he talks about uh, getting a chance. Um, you know, the whole court system, I've seen my mom, seen my dad, seen my aunts, my uncles. Um, so by the time I'm coming up in the system, that you know, they're just basically like, oh, well, there's, you know, Macintosh Jr. He's, you might as well just pack him up and send him, you know, to, to prison. Um, so, um, first case I caught was just uh, a battery charge. I did like 30 days and got out. Of course, I went back to the same behavior. 
Um, second case um, was a big one. It was an A felony manufacturing methamphetamine. Uh, an A felony means 25 to 50 years. Yeah, so um, what happened was, um, without going all the way into detail, there were some people at my house, uh, because my house was the drug house, uh, you know, uh, that were doing whatever they were doing. I, I was laying down because I didn't feel well from, actually from withdrawal symptoms, you know, withdrawals. Um, and so when the cops came in, everybody got charged for it. So, and of course, living that lifestyle, you don't say anything to anyone about any of that kind of stuff. So we all went down for it. But anyways, long story short, I did seven months in jail, um, and we all pled out to a D felony, uh, having more than two things to make methamphetamine, and uh, like I got time served with like three years probation. Well, um, some time goes on, I'm using the needle really bad, um, and my, I missed probation like a few months in a row. Sorry, this is kind of, I know it's, I'm getting to something. Um, I missed probation a few months in a row, and um, I, at that point I knew I was kind of doomed, about ready to go back to jail, you know. So I called my probation officer, and her name was Kimberly, her name is Kimberly Ritchie, and uh, she, she was a godsend, like an angel from heaven. But I called her, I said, I don't know what to do, you know, I know I haven't been to probation. Um, strung out really bad and I need help I don't know what to do you know I just don't know what to do you know um, and so after we get off the phone she said call me tomorrow I'm gonna look some stuff up for you I'm gonna help you out so <laughs> sorry um, she said I'm gonna look at you you know I'm gonna help you call me tomorrow and I'll have the you know something for you um, well I walked from using the phone to walk to my grandma's house, the same place where I got busted seven months earlier, um, and everybody's there. We're all, you know, they're all using drugs. You know, um, the cops busted in. Um, it was a raid, um, and 15 people got arrested that day um, from my house, and um, and it was the very day that I broke down to my probation officer. So when I'm in jail, I, we all go to jail and. I go to court to be arraigned and I see my probation officer. She's just shaking her head. I remember she said, remember that help you asked me for? I said, yep. And I was just walking by on the chain gang. She said, you're about to get it. And I'm like, oh man. <laughs> so, long story short, that woman fought for me. And, uh, tooth and nail to get me in treatment, which uh, obviously was a blessing. And um, I got court ordered to the Salvation Army Adult Rehabilitation Center, downtown Indianapolis, um, which is actually a faith-based um, program, but they introduce you to alcohol, to anonymous, NA, CA, all that stuff. Um, and it it definitely helped. Um, that was two and a half years ago. Um, but if I hadn't went through that program and been given a chance, um, I'd still be that kid. Uh, we're using drugs. <clears throat> Sorry. <laughs> 